Hello everyone, it is Shania Richardson of She Rich Educational Consulting here with my blog, Inclusive and Diversified Classroom Management 101. This is blog number four, Shared Literacy in Mathematics. Many states have adopted Common Core state standards as a framework for instruction, as you already know. And as a critical part of these standards, the overlapping of academic disciplines is emphasized. Now, literacy is pertinent in most courses except for, you guessed it, mathematics. Unless you consider students completing two word problems at the end of a lesson, literacy promotion, literacy in math class is pretty much non-existent. Typically, it is perceived that students will either be stronger in mathematics and weaker in literacy or stronger in literacy and weaker in mathematics. But I contend that why can't our students have the best of both worlds? After all, they are the future. In the past, when the topic of integrating literacy across the curriculum arose in various staff meetings, many math teachers expressed concerns. I'm not an English teacher, or I'm not an English major. I don't know how to teach essay writing, or my kids are already struggling with math. And you want me to do what now? Or, I'm a math person. I don't do poetry and Shakespeare and all that kind of stuff. I have no interest in that. So, mindset is a huge barrier to successful implementation of literacy in the classroom. But I got you. I got you. Picture this. In a world, in today's world, in reality, there is no such thing as a flat character. Now, a quick ELA lesson. Flat characters are people who are one-dimensional. They are only known by one or two characteristic traits. But if you decided to become a teacher, you are not a flat character. You are a dynamic character which means that your inspiration comes from a multitude of sources. Thereby, you are not just a math teacher. You so happen to be a math teacher, but that's not the only thing that you do. And that is not your only interest, and that's not the only thing that you're good at. So, even if you do consider yourself a math person, you may have interest in art, science, music, politics, history, psychology, health, and so forth, and so on. So you're not just a math person. And whatever you love to do, whatever your interests are, whatever your hobbies, whatever your talents are, you're going to be enthused to share what you know about your personal interests. So maybe you're like, okay, Miss Richardson, I hear what you're saying, but I really don't get the connection between how my interests or my hobbies are going to help me teach literacy in my math classroom. Okay, again, I got you. I'm going to break it all the way down. In blog two, I talked about having extended learning opportunities as part as your instructional pacing. Literacy focus is a great insert after the classwork is completed. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose what I call a math related article about something that you have a personal interest in. For example, let's say you're a roller coaster enthusiast and you're wanting to teach your students this day about how to calculate speed and velocity. So you start off with your hook, and your hook is just a basic question. 
How fast is the fastest roller coaster in the world? A. 50 miles per hour. B. 120 miles per hour. C. 75 miles per hour. Or D. 149 miles per hour. Now, you're not going to reveal the answer, but you're going to move forward with your do now or your bell ringer, and then you move forward to um, your independent student practice, your guided practice, whatever you had in your plans for the day for teaching speed and velocity. Then the students will complete the exit ticket, and then those who finish early can go ahead and start on the extended learning activity, which is an article about roller coasters. And it also reveals the answer to the hook. So students are bubbling and buzzing to get through the classwork assignment so they can find out how fast the fastest roller coaster is. And it provides an intrinsic motivation and builds that appetite for learning with the integration of math and literacy. So, um, basically, you may still be wondering, like, okay, Miss Richardson, will this really work, what you're talking about? <laughs> will it Will it really work? Um, this is math class, and uh, you're telling me to expect students to read in math class. So, I offer this. Let's say... You plan to go to the movies. And you ate before you went to the movie. So you say, I'm going to skip out on the popcorn because I'm not hungry. I already ate. But then you come in. You see them popping the popcorn and you smell that popcorn. Then you see other people eating the popcorn and they're enjoying the popcorn. And then you sit down in your seat and there are all these ads saying, buy popcorn. What do you do? You go back to that concession stand, pay $20 for a bucket of popcorn, and you eat it and you enjoy it. Even though the popcorn is double the price of the movie ticket. Now, all that is is great sales and promotion. And I'm telling you, if you... Focus on literacy and market it and promote it in the same way. Your students will eat that popcorn. I assure you, they will eat the popcorn. So, with that being said, you want to make a relevant connection between what you're teaching in real-world scenarios and roller coaster riding which is something that students are interested in, and you may be interested in, it will just increase the appetite for learning, which will also motivate your math lesson and give you momentum with that. And you do not have to be an English teacher to print off what I call math-motivated articles and have the students answer five to ten comprehension questions on um, roller coasters in the speed of roller coasters. And with this being implemented, math teachers, congratulations, you win. Articles, where to find. ReadWorks is a great free online database that has many articles on any topic you can think of at multiple grade levels. And also, because I love you so much, I have downloaded a few, and you can find those on my website in the teacher toolbox. So click in the description link below, and there you will find your math motivated literacy articles that you can use and you can print. Also, Next Sunday, you don't want to miss, I will be going into more detail about ideas for extended learning activities or project-based learning activities, whatever you want to call them. So you don't want to miss that.
it's a good one. And also, if you don't want to miss it, then it may be a good idea to like, comment, and subscribe. That way, you can keep up with the latest. Well, I look forward to chatting with you again Sunday, and thank you for your time. Goodbye now.